Hallelujah. Man, does everybody look better? <laughs> Glory. Ah, did you, did you, did you? Did you cross over? Glory. If you didn't, we'll kick you over. <laughs> Oh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in his presence is fullness of joy. 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 Joy, joy, joy. Hallelujah. What a time and season we're in. Amen. I mean, you know, it's like, praise God. Those that press in and touch get touched. Touch his heart, he touches yours. Amen. And let me tell you, we need to cross over daily. Daily. And if you didn't cross over one day, you better cross over twice the next. <laughs> Hallelujah. James chapter 1. Woo! Glory, glory, and glorious. <laughs> Amen. Refreshing, not refleshing. James 1. Oh, glory. I got paint all over my stuff. Hallelujah. We are having a refreshing tonight in an area of recognition and acknowledging your enemy. Not promoting, but demoting. There is a war going on. Amen? It's a spiritual war, but there's something about a spiritual war. In James chapter 1 and verse 2, let's speak it. My brethren, count it all miserable. Count it all what? It's joy and emotion. Amen. I want you to grab hold of this. He said, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So what was he doing? He said he released an emotion to overcome. Does everybody get it? I'm re yeah, listen, I I'm telling you, this is phenomenal stuff. I mean, I've heard this stuff over and over, and I'm like, man, you, you know, when the Holy Spirit shows you something from a whole different dimension, it's like, whoa. He said, my people look spiritual warfare, but they lose sight that it's emotional warfare. It's emotional warfare. We, spiritual warfare is emotional warfare. Can you see your emotions? You can't, but everybody else can. <laughs> Actually, they can see your desires, can't they? We are in a warfare that is actually emotional warfare, but it's, we call it spiritual warfare, but it is the same because the spirits are always trying to impose an emotion. Now, there's clean and unclean emotions. Anything that is released not from God that's an emotion is unclean. My brother counted all emotionally joy when you fall into various trials of emotional. <laughs> Knowing that the testing of your faith, your connection, produces patience or what we call endurance. Endurance. See, when you don't recognize something, you don't endure very good. In fact, when people don't recognize something, they go off course into another direction, and they may begin to battle in a whole other direction, and they're losing the battle. Now, I'm wondering why they're losing the battle, because it's an emotional battle. Does everybody get it? So they're not able to keep the joy while they're battling. Why? Because by keeping the joy, you're keeping God's presence. He says something, he says, verse 4, he said, but let this 
endurance, this patience, have its perfect work. Perfect work. Why? That you may be perfect com and complete, lacking no understanding of what's going on. Does everybody understand that? If anyone use, lacks wisdom, now what does wisdom do? Tells you what to, what to do. And understanding tells you how to do it. Right. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and he gives it all liberally and without reproach and will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in what? Faith. See, people, sometimes people pray and there's no faith involved in it. It's not activated. It's not turned on. See, when we pray, you see. You don't pray without seeing. Why? Because it causes you to cross over, and while you're praying, you're connecting. Now you're praying what he wants you to pray. You know what he wants you to pray. Remember, we maintain a routine, not a ritual. Amen? Let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable in all his, his ways. Why? Listen, people that are carrying unclean emotions are unstable. Does everybody get it? They're unstable. Again, immediately, James and Pirates are a direct answer to all trials. Maintain joy. Needed to endure. And what it does is it maintains your focus. It maintains your identity. And it will maintain humility. Again, he releases an emotional answer, joy, because <laughs> reality is it reflects an emotion. We're in a, an emotional battle right now. Amen? It's in the spirit realm, but it's affecting the physical realm in a fight to feel good. Everybody's in a fight to feel good. There isn't a person on this earth that doesn't want to feel good. Why? Because we came from feel good. Amen? We came from feel good. We want to feel good. I want to feel wonderful all the time. I want to feel drunk all the time. Amen? Uh, but God's love is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That's the feelings we have. So here James released joy. Here's the emotion. You want to battle? You better have joy. Or you're going to lose the battle. You'll be misdirected and so forth. And one of the things that happens is when people are not in the emotion, when they're not in the battle and maintaining joy, they get drained. They get drained and they become dry. They become dry land. And sometimes it takes a long time to refresh because they're still under that emotional, unclean emotional battle. They've accepted an unclean emotion. How many of y'all know fear is an unclean emotion? Verse 12. But blessed is the man who what? Endures the temptation. When he has been approved, he will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say he's tempted, <laughs> that I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own, what's that, a desire? It's an emotion. And enticed. In other words, he's drawn away. It's not by just an emotion. It's an unclean emotion. And then enticed. Then when this emotion, this desire, this want is conceived, it gives birth to what? The presence of evil, which is sin. In other words, he got his way. Does everybody get it? Because that's what the voice of the stranger, these are fiery darts. They release it to entice, to create an unclean emotion. And when a person grabs hold of it, they invite the presence of evil. Now, they've, now they're bound. And unless they loose them and get rid of it quickly, it begins to drain them. And then what happens, they begin to look for fulfillment in another area. Because they've got, you're looking, everybody's looking to feel good. 
And some people go right back where they came from in the old man. Some of them, they compromise in certain areas. Let me tell you, one compromise can throw you right off the cliff. It only takes one. Amen? Oh, glory. Again, then when it's desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, which is the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. That's the end result. Psalm 34. Emotional war. You know, we talk about emotions a lot. We talk about all kinds of things a lot. But the process is always exposing our enemy. Amen? Why? So we can recognize. If you don't recognize what you're fighting, you're going to get beat up pretty bad. And if you don't know how to fight back, it makes it even worse. But you fight back by recognizing, knowing. Amen? Well, because one of the greatest fight backs is resist. Amen? People are fasting and praying to go through. That's all they needed to do is say, no. Get behind me. Psalm 34, verse 1. Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord when I feel like it. At all times. woo -hoo. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. Man, if that would happen with everyone, there wouldn't be any stupid thing said. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be, and be, it's glad and emotion. It's joy, isn't it? Amen. But he said the humble will hear it and be glad. The pride will hear it and be miserable. They are. They can't stand it. You start praising and worshiping God, they want to turn on something else. They want to turn on demon influence. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he did what? And he heard me and he delivered me from all my emotional unclean fear. They looked at him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. What was his troubles? Emotional. And the angel of the Lord encamped all around those who fear God. What a wonderful emotion. Reverence to God. And delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I'll teach you the reverence and fear of the Lord, who is a man who desires life. I mean, there isn't a person that really wants to die, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, don't, I, mean, I look forward to going home, but I know God's got a plan. I don't believe my time is up, but so be it if it is. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue tied in a bow. Amen? Keep your tongue from what? Evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek what? Peace. What's peace? It's an emotion. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit is the love of God. Those three emotions is God's love. Amen? So he says, seek peace and pursue it. Humble, hears him and is glad. He sought the Lord in all of his many emotional battles of fear. Those that fear him, there's no desire for other fulfillments. Amen? I mean, if you're really connected, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> You know, when, I mean, you might want, you might need something, you might want something, but, you know, and when it's not available, whatever, you know, God's going to bring it somehow, you know. Something's going to happen. See, if you've crossed over, you're not living for you. You know, 
I mean, we still have to function in this world. Amen? I mean, be nice once that day when the Lord's, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a day that's going to come. He says, don't go to work no more. And it doesn't mean you're on vacation. It means go next door, knock on the door, because we're going home, get that person with you. And go down here and go down here and go down here and go down there. Because we have so many days left. Amen? We're getting there closer and closer. Psalm 37. I mean, look at all these people that are veiled, right? Think about that. They're afraid they're going to get something, I guess. I don't know how they brush their teeth. Psalm 37, verse 1. Nothing gets done because nobody can understand anyone, you know. Especially some of these people that got these ones with bars on them and stuff. There's like double things and... They sound like they're chewing something behind that mask. Verse 1, let's speak it. Do not what? Fret. What's fret? And it's not a person, amen? Do not what? Fret. Because of what? Evil doers. Is fret an emotion? Yes. Nor be what? Envious. Is envious an emotion? Oh, you better snap it. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. 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 You know what a what faithful person is? Someone that's activated. Activated in what? Faith. His faith is activated constantly. He's called faithful. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord. Do we delight ourselves in the Lord tonight? Amen. Well, then he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because your desires have been exchanged. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently. Endurance. For him, and do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger. Is anger an emotion? Yes. Can it be unclean? Can it be clean? Yeah. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. So, you know, fret's an unclean emotion. Amen. Praise God. Don't fear because of evil. Trust the light and feed on his promises and his presence, and your heart will change with the desires from him. 2 Corinthians 6. Emotional warfare. We are talking about emotional warfare. Again, you can't warfare your something you don't understand. Glorious. Second Corinthians six verse eleven. Hallelujah. Oh Corinthians, oh house of true ministries. <laughs> We have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you're restricted by your own affections, which are what? Emotions. Now, these are unclean emotions. So what he's saying, unclean emotions will restrict you. Does everybody get that? When there's an unclean emotion, you are restricted. Restricted for what? Advancing and crossing over? Receiving and filling? You're restricted. 
and you'll become dry. You're restricted from get. Listen, there's moist, there's wet, and there's saturation. Amen? It's all power to the courts. Outer court is moist, holy places, wet, most holy places, saturated. We want to be saturated. See, people that are not saturated become lukewarm. You can't just be moist and make it. You must be saturated. Amen? Oh, happy days. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 13. Now in return for the same, I speak as to what? Children, you also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. Why? They're promoters of what? Unclean emotions. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has a temple of God with idols? Idols. Now, I want to share something about an idol. There are clean and unclean idols. Jesus can be a clean idol. Amen? It's something you go after, something that's, you know. But any, you got to be very careful of idols. Too many times people have, see, what you enjoy or you love the most is your idol. It's going to be clean or unclean. Does everybody get it? Whatever you do the most, whatever you love the most, whatever you're doing the most of is your idol. It'll either be clean or be unclean. And it can start clean and turn into unclean. Amen? You can get blessed with a job. And now it becomes an idol. Now your job's more important than the Lord. Your success is more important than the Lord. See, now that's turned over to an idol. Does everybody get it? Now it becomes unclean. No matter what you're doing, you could be playing sports, no matter what it is. When it begins to become more time-consuming, more important than Christ, learning Christ, following Christ, imparting Christ, it's an idol. And it can become unclean. Is everybody okay? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I'll be their God. And they shall be my people if they do what? If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean. What's he really talking about? Things that are unclean. How about an emotion? It's unclean. Isn't that the most devastating thing? I mean, when people are emotionally ill, I mean, even emotion brings sickness to the body. Amen? Hardships. Areas of betrayal and rejection. All of these things. That the enemy uses to bring an unclean emotion. Amen? That's why he says, count it all joy. What are you doing? You're exchanging those unclean things for a clean one. Don't touch what's unclean and I'll receive you. And I'll be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters. Listen, I'll be a father to you. In other words, I'm better than anything. There isn't anything, any emotion that can be fulfilled than to have a father. Come on, think about this. Our father is God. Try to tell that to your neighbor. My father's God. <laughs> and he speaks to me. <laughs> they think you're nuts. We are. We're crazy about Jesus. Glory. Emotional restrictions. One of the things that gets restricted is discernment. The second thing that gets restricted is sight. Hallelujah. And what begins to happen if it stays there, a person will actually, no matter how mature they are, will step back into a place of immaturity. And what is immaturity? Acting like a human. 
Does everybody get it? Immaturity is acting like a human. Does everybody understand that? We're not humans. We're eternal beings in a flesh suit. We carry the divine nature of God Almighty. We're his kids. Far be it, we should be acting human-like. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Unclean emotions that are rooted to lust and flesh. That's what an unclean emotion is. It also brings blinders. In other words, it, pre it pre prevents a person from seeing through. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I mean, there's just some people who just wanted to tell them, man, you're just acting like a human. Glory. Verse 1. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. You, therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the plan, grace, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful. What's a faithful person? One that's faith is activated. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. Hello. Why? Because someone that's not faithful, that faith is not activated, isn't going to teach someone else. They're not going to share what they've learned. They're going to take it, absorb it, feel good, and the devil's going to come and steal it. Because they're not willing to share it. Verse 3. You therefore must endure hardship as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. Listen, no one engaged in emotional warfare <laughs> or warfare, spiritual warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That's the emotional affairs of this life. Unclean emotions. But you don't know my circumstance. Thank God. And I don't need to know them. He knows them. You need to give it to him. You need to cut yourself loose from all these unclean emotions. It's all about me. Three eyes and you're out. Hello. You just struck out. But I, I, I. <laughs> you missed. Next batter. No one engaged in warfare and takes himself with the affairs of this life. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone can... Man, you try and tell a Marine about emotion. Somebody that's been in military emotion. That's the first thing they begin to beat out of you. I mean, I was 17 years old. I just got out of boot camp. They told me I was going to Vietnam. I said, no way. Well, I agreed to shore duty. That's why. I was like, wait a minute. What's this? I said, my wife is going to have a kid in about three weeks or whatever. I was 17. I said, your wife is not in your sea bag. Well, you have a point there. And then they began to train me up in all kinds of other stuff and whatever. But again, emotion is not a part of military operation. It's not about how you feel. Hold on a second. If you don't shoot me, I won't shoot you. <laughs> don't work that way. There's no emotions. Unfortunately, there's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of fear in the military. One thing is, is they're fearing for their life. And the only thing that keeps them alert is fear for their life and hatred. Does everybody understand that? But people get programmed. When you come out of the military, you've got to get deprogrammed. Listen, when you stop being a human, you've got to get deprogrammed. Amen? That's why the word says, renewing your what? Mind. Renewing your thoughts. You've got to come out of the wave as a humanite. Become an eternal light. Amen? Praise God. 
Is everybody there still? Cool, let's go on. Let's go to James 4. The emotions of this life is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And these are unclean emotions, and they are of the world, not of the Father. James 4. Oh, happy days. Happy days of motion, right? Praise God. It's joy. Actually, the world is happy. We're joyful. <clears throat> They're happy they didn't get caught. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your... They're there. It's called carnal members. Flesh. You lust and don't have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And the reason why people don't ask is because they know it's wrong. But some people don't care. <clears throat> Verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your, what's your pleasures? Desires. What's your desires? Emotions. Your unclean emotions. Amen. Adulterers and adulteresses, he, now he tells you. Now, this is not about fornication. This is about in the area of relationship with the Lord. Because there are people who are adulterers and adulteresses. Why? Because there's, they have idols in their life and they have forsaken God. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So he just says it, man. You're a friend of the world. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. These are unclean emotions. Now you're disconnected from the Lord, and he considers you an adulterer and adulteresses. Why? Because you're touching, you are taking in unclean emotions. How many of you know alcohol produces an unclean emotion? Drugs, alcohol, and all the other stuff. Pornography, they produce unclean emotions. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Amen? Hallelujah. Adulterers and adulterers, do, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself a what? Enemy of God. Wow. So unclean emotions will cause you to become an enemy of God. Now, actually, to you as an individual, God is your enemy. Because these emotions now have caused a person to try and avoid God's presence. Does everybody understand that? Remember, it says that when the desire has conceived, it brings forth what? Sin, which is the presence of evil. Presence of evil is always going to cause you to walk away from the presence of God or avoid the presence of God. Amen? Or do you think that the Scripture says... In vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. But he gives more grace, therefore, he says, God resists the what? Proud, unclean emotion. But he gives grace to the humble, a clean emotion. Therefore, submit to God. Hello. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he'll what? Flee from you. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. What causes double-minded? Unclean emotions. Amen? Remember, emotional warfare is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is emotional warfare. Luke 11. Hallelujah. Luke 11, verse 24. 
everybody there? Hallelujah. I was explained this tremendously today. Let's look at this. It says, when an unclean spirit, now does an unclean spirit carry unclean emotions? Yes. When an unclean spirit goes out of a person or a man, he goes through dry places. Why is he going through dry places? No emotions to get fed on. Everybody get it? Seeking rest. He's going through these dry places. He's not staying there because there's no emotion to get fed on because demons must get fed by emotion. And finding none, he says, I'm going to return to the house I just left, got thrown out of. Why? Because I used to survive on the emotions living there. And when he comes and he finds it swept and put in order, whoa, swept and put in order. In other words, his emotions are put in order. Amen? He says, look at me, and I can't do nothing about this. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits. He says, I need to go get more to attack this. More wicked than himself. So he's one, and he's got seven others worse than him who's going to come and attack this person to try and provoke to agree with an unclean emotion. That's why people backslide. They can't overcome. Is everybody okay? Does everybody see this? And when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, goes through. Finding none, he goes back to his home. And when he comes there, he finds it put in order. And he goes and takes other spirits with him, seven more that are worse than him, and they enter and dwell there. And the last day to that man is worse than the first. Wow. <laughs> These are unclean emotions not sent by God. They entice, provoke, promote, manipulate. I'm going to say that again. So are you ready? They entice, provoke, they promote, they manipulate, and they draw attention to your selfish fulfillment. They bring them to you. Me, 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 me. Well, what about me? Well, what about me? What about him? And they un inflict untimely, unclean emotional afflictions causing a drain of the spirit. And what happens? A person becomes a dry land, becomes lukewarm, or becomes cold. No longer hot. He loses the saturation the wet and falls into moist and then becomes dry. 1 Corinthians 3. Glory. Everybody okay? I mean, this is what's happening in the world right now. Everybody's being attacked emotionally, even when you turn on the news. I mean, you know, you hear such stuff and such stupid things that go on. It's like you want to, like, slap these people, you know. It's like, what the heck? You want to slap the hell out of them and make room for heaven. And put them in the jail of salvation. <laughs> If they'd let me, I'd go visit them. <laughs> Glory. Verse 1, let's speak it. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to humans. Carnal, as to babes in Christ. Why? I fed you with milk and, you, and not with solid food, for until now you weren't even able to receive it. And even now you're still not able, for you are still human. Carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions, gossip, slander, and criticism, coarse jesting among you, are you not still human? Carnal, behaving like a man. Hello, behaving like a what? A human. 
Somebody get it. Everyone say, I'm no longer human. I'm an eternal light, not a humanite. Amen. Still acting like a human. Citizens of the world, not citizens of heaven. James 3. James 3, verse 13. You know, what usually begins to happen is that when a person falls into that state of being, they become justifying and blaming. Why? Because they can't recognize what's happening. And they've got to blame it on something. So they don't blame it on themselves, far be it. Pride is there, you know. Oh, hallelujah. Everyone say, I'm responsible for what I agree with. Nobody else. Glory. James 3, uh, verse 13. Is everybody there? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. That's what he's saying. Why? You open the door to an unclean emotion. This wisdom does not what? Ooh, does not descend from above. But is earthly, human, sensual, and demonic. It's fleshly. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion. And every evil thing are there. That's what a person's always going, I just don't understand. It's called confusion. Does everybody get it? I just don't understand why. I don't. It's called confusion. It's because of an unclean emotion. What's it done? It's brought confusion. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are accessing. But the wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, hallelujah, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Self-seeking is the human nature of the world character. Unclean emotions, self-justification and blame, not recognizing or engaging, but activating <laughs> or activating the faith. Listen, we are in an emotional warfare. I'm telling you right now, everything that's happening right now is an emotional warfare. Yes, it's spiritual. It's unseen. Emotions are unseen until they begin to manifest. You know what they are, though. You can sense it. Amen. You sense emotion. You know what's going on. Proverbs 14. Remember, it doesn't mean it's not going to come. It's what you do with it. Amen? We live in an emotional world. You're being attacked all the time on emotion. In fact, the enemy's reminding you of every single day of your past. Do you remember? That's what you're trying to do, and activate an unclean emotion. How about unforgiveness? Amen. There are people still in unforgiveness. Still blaming every, their past relationships, their past jobs, their past bosses, their past, they're even blaming themselves. Forgive yourself. God forgive you. Why shouldn't you? Hallelujah. Proverbs 14. Learn from your mistakes. Amen. Proverbs 14, verse 26. Let's speak it. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of, of death. In a multitude of people is a king's honor, but in the lack of people, there's a downfall of a prince. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding. In other words, he doesn't react responds when there's an unclean emotion 
I can tell you it pushes for you to react right away. Does everybody get it? It's a pusher, not a leader. He who is slow to wrath has great understanding, but he who is impulsive, hello, exalts what? Folly. There it is. Fear of the Lord is strong. Turn away the snares of unclean emotion. You know, for us to see through, sometimes we have to slow things down and not react, but respond. Impulsive. That means they're unaware. <laughs> they're impulsive, not controlled, restraint of emotions that cause harm. Our heart is to be solid and steadfast, God-fearing, connected, saturated, and reflecting the character of Christ. Amen? Let's close at Revelation 3. Clean emotions will destroy the body. They destroy the immune system. They begin to cause the body to eat itself. Everybody in this room has been hurt somehow. Amen. And it's, and it's tough. Emotional hurt is tough. Man, you'd rather have physical. At least you can put a Band-Aid on it. You, know? <laughs> you can do something. But in that, the only thing that we can do is press in and constantly remove it. Exchange it. And get in God's presence as much as possible. till it finally lifts. I mean, you can bind and loosen all, everything else, but let me tell you, first of all, you got to recognize what it is, or you're just beating at the air. Revelation 3, 14. And you can always humble yourself. Stick your hand out to someone and say, would you mind praying with me? Amen? Amen? But don't go to the phone and blab. Go to the throne and repent. Because when somebody goes to the phone, and let, let me tell you something, texting is going to the phone. Okay? People try to get away. Why well, didn't talk on the phone? Yeah, well, you text all stinking day long. <laughs> Machine gun fingers. Emotional machine, unclean emotional fingers, you know. <laughs> Better sanctify those thumbs. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Revelation 3, verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Lord, the seeing write, these things says the amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. What a statement. Because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> associating with unclean emotions, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments and that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed to everybody else. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may what? See, now listen, what do we talk about? What does an unclean emotion bring? As many as I love, I rebuke and chase, and therefore be zealous and repent. Therefore I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Anybody want to sit on a throne with Jesus? It's a huge throne. Gazaeans. 
He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to us tonight. That we may recognize, expose, and fight a good fight of emotional warfare. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your mercies and grace to continue to abound and help us to recognize with the wisdom you've granted and the understanding what is unclean and clean emotion to be sons and daughters that express you in this day and hour. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Stay blessed with the Lord.